thankful to Mayur for inviting me to deliver this lecture and be a part of Har uh, Harmon India. And uh, it's my privilege and honor to be part of that uh, Dr. Yagnik and to talk with Dr. Sunil Gupta. They are stalwarts of diabetes. Okay. And uh, I say that this slide and uh, Dr. Sunil Gupta has given me this, shared me these slides so that I can speak on this outcome of pregnancy. Uh, Thing is poorly managed medium. So we have seen about the management of diabetes. Managed GDM. We have learned, uh, seen about GDM. Doctor Yognik has cleared so many controversies about GDM. And GDM, we know that it's a big problem in India. And uh, as uh, Doctor Navneet Agrawal and in previous lectures also we have discussed that the age of type two diabetes is coming down. That's why we are seeing more GDM patients. Because now the our girls they have become pregnant pregnant at the age of 30 years, and that is the age of getting diabetes in India. We have more patient around 30 to 40 years of age. So let us see something about poorly managed GDM. So pregnancy may be complicated by diabetes into distinct forms. We know that diabetes, uh, gestational diabetes, and uh, pre-gestational diabetes. But why worry about GDM and pre-GDM? Pre -GDM? If they have high blood sugar, that, is, that we have seen in the last two lectures, that uncontrolled diabetes during pregnancy leads to problems, increased maternal and fetal morbidity and mortality, and there is higher rate of fetal malformations. It's an occasion for a mother to become pregnant and to have a baby and that is you just can't purchase in crores of rupees so it's a wonderful experience and if something happens like this in that it's a very nobody wants all these things so both these situations are associated with increased maternal and fetal morbidity and uh, mortality and visually this magnitude of gdm is increasing this is one study from dr mohan's diabetes specialties Pregnancy outcomes in pre-GDM and GDM women in comparison to non-diabetic women, a prospective study in Asian Indian mothers. And what they concluded, women with diabetes have worse pregnancy outcomes. That is also told by Dr. Yagni. Outcome compared to non-diabetic mothers and those with pre-gestational diabetes fare worse, worse than those with gestational diabetes. So gestational diabetes is better than pre-gestational diabetes. Well, I'll tell you how. So there is one study, very important landmark study, uh, published in 2008, hyperglycemia and adverse pregnancy are outcome, that is HAPO study. So what they look, maternal hypoglycemia, less severe to, to, to be diagnosed as uh, type 2 diabetes but with adverse pregnancy outcome. And they studied more than 25,000 pregnant women and nine countries, 24 to 32 weeks onwards. And women with glucose levels not suggestive of diabetes by OGTT were included. Very important study. And what was the result? There was a continuous strong association between maternal glucose levels below those diagnostic of diabetes and adverse outcome. This, this has also been shown by Dr. Yagni. And you can see that, you can appreciate these uh, figures, glucose categories, OGTT, fasting, and two hour OGTT. And you can see that if the sugars are high, birth weight, clinical hypoglycemia, primary caesarean section, and even the cord C peptide more than 90% percentile. So these all include that there is problem. But why to have GDM is safer than pre-GDM? Implications of pre-existing diabetes, the concept of the fuel mediated teratogenesis. This was also told by Dr. Yagni. So this is organ organogenesis than behavioral pre-existing diabetes. So these two things are also included if the patient is pre-gestational diabetes. And gestational starts after third trimester. So this time is passed. 
So preconceptional diabetes of any type has more serious implications for the fetus than gestational diabetes. This is very important message for us that when we see our patient, tell them that if when you become, if you want to become you pregnant, you are going for pregnancy, just one should have preconception counseling. Usually we see that our diabetic patients, they come with even 9, 10, sir, pata nahi, who gave pregnancy, this is a very important thing. And then there is problem for us and for patient also. Since the former can influence fetal development, and that is in first trimester initial stage, preconceptionally as well as throughout pregnancy. Okay? So we know that it's not simple if the sugars are not under control. Baby can have a lot of things that they are congenital malformation, central nervous system, neural tube defect, meningocele, and a lot of caudal regression syndrome, uh, cardiovascular tetralogy, a lot of things, urinary system. There is also some renal agenesis, congenital malformation, gastrointestinal, duodenal atresia, anorectal atresia, musculoskeletal system, functional. So these all, and uh, why neural tube defects are the commonest congenital anomaly in friends of diabetic mothers. But they are not specific, specific for diabetes. The most specific anomaly is sacral and agency that is caudal regression syndrome but fortunately this is rare so you can see that this is all anomalies and the timing the weeks of gestation is you can i think you can appreciate this is just three weeks three weeks six weeks so all all this happens all anomalies they happen in initial stage so if your patient is pre-gestational you have to be very careful preconception counseling is very important so most of the congenital malformations would already have occurred by the time woman realized that she is pregnant. So this is the problem. Hence the importance of preconception counseling and achievement of good glycemic control prior to conception. And we know now the prevalence of obesity and diabetes in younger patients. So congenital malformation, infants of diabetic mothers, this is malformation, ratio of incidence. So this is on higher side. Okay. So this is neural tube defects, most com common but non-specific manifestations of diabetic embryopathy. And that's why we give provide folic acid to all folate supplementation to prevent this. Sacral agenesis, caudal regression syndrome. This is sacral agenesis. It's a very pitiable condition. You can see that. So in first trimester, we have the exposure to abnormal mixed nutrients during organogenesis. That is first to six, eight weeks of gestation may cause spontaneous miscarriage, intrauterine growth retardation, and malformation. This is very precious time for a pregnant woman, first trimester. Second trimester, we have that is hyperglycemia during the second trimester when that formation and development of brain cells takes place, alters the behavioral, intellectual, and psychological pattern in childhood. So this is second trimester. And uh, those, the patient, those who are already pre-GDM, they pass through all these stages. Third trimester, maternal hyperglycemia. In the third trimester causes, we know, Proliferation of fetal adipocytes, muscle cells, and pancreatic beta cells, and neuroendocrine system, which form the base for macrosomia. Macrosomia, big, chubby baby, that is very common in type 2 diabetic patient. And this is because of third trimester. If the sugars are not under control, okay, and this may lead to obesity, IGT, and even type 2 diabetes in later life. So to control blood sugar in all trimesters is very important. This is also one study that structural, structural anomalies and preconceptional A1C. Sometimes we, we know that the patient they report to us very late with A1C 12, 13, and you can see that. And absolute risk gradually increases if the A1C levels are high. 
So high A1C is not an indication in itself for terminating the pregnancy. We do not ask for termination, but we know that it's a problem. Maybe a patient can have problem. The pregnancy and neonatal risk associated with high HB A1C should be discussed and proper counseling offered. That's why very preconceptional counseling and before conception, the A1C should be below six. That is very important. So consequences of diabetes on the pregnant mother, more with pregidium, that is hypoglycemia, diabetic ketosis, retinopathy, nephropathy. We know all these things, hypertension, diabetic dystrophy, polyhydromnios, preeclampsia, pyelonephritis, other infections, preterm labor, abortions, traumatic delivery, over diabetes. These all are maternal complications of GDM if the sugars are not under control. And uh, we know that patient can have retinopathy and if they have already retinopathy, that can worsen. So it's important to get fundus of our patient during pregnancy. That is very important to prevent this complication. Nephropathy is also co common in women with reduced creatinine clearance. There is an increased risk of deterioration of renal function during pregnancy. And it's a, then it a, becomes problem. There is increased risk of maternal hypertensive complication and you know can lead to pre eclampsia increases of fetal growth restriction and fetal distress due to placental ins insufficiency. So the, if the patient is already, she is patient of CKD, they are not uh, allowed to, uh, to be pregnant. This is a very important thing because there is great risk. So why does one aim for right tight glycemic control or day and night control? So if you just see for perinatal mortality, that is also high if your sugars are on higher side. So this is very important thing. So because of two things are important, failure to diagnose the condition. Maybe we do not know it's by chance the patient they come to us with high A1C. So that's why importance of pre conception counseling and degree of glycemic control during pregnancy. That is in our hands and with that we have to control. So do we need to identify and treat GDM? Yes, that is very important thing. And uh, um, maybe we we, sh we all know that these are indications for high risk for GDM. Age more than 25 years, we know that nowadays we see uh, usually around 30 years pregnant ladies because of late marriages, family history of diabetes, obesity is very common. Most, mostly they come with obese, uh, obese type of diabetic, bad obstetric history, unexplained perinatal loss, IUD in previous pregnancies, that for gestational age infant, congenitally malformed infant, that is if they, if they have history, polyhydromnias, preeclampsia, and glucose in second fasting urine sample. So education is the cornerstone of all diabetes, GDM management. We know that education is the cornerstone of all diabetes management. Likewise, in GDM, you have to educate your patient regarding maternal complication, fetal complication, medical nutrition therapy, glycemic monitoring, SMB, how to do SMB, how to take insulin, so many things. Fetal monitoring, ultrasound, planning on delivery and long term. This, see, this is all to be managed. And so this is my take home message that preconception counseling is must if you want to prevent uh, outcome of poorly managed GDM. That is, if you want to prevent, if you want to give a good, a, uh, healthy baby to your uh, expect, expectant mother. Okay. And all pregnant women in India should be screened for diabetes. That is, that we have seen universal screening for India. Um, that was told by Dr. Sunil Gupta. First screening should take place at the first antenatal visit. Pre-existing diabetes in a pregnant woman has more serious implications than GDM that we all know for both for the mother as well as the fetus. And we have opportunity to counsel, to educate our the young patient those coming to us and they are not pregnant, but they are planning for pregnancy to counsel them, to ask them to reduce, to decrease weight, to control blood sugar and to keep even sit below six before conception. Okay, so this is all about uh, outcomes of poorly managed GDM. 
and thank you if you want to prevent all these things just eat less and work more thanks a lot thanks mayur for giving me this opportunity